Good luck for you. All right. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday, and uh, yes, we're live right now. And uh, welcome to our So Far So Good with Properly Lim Brothers. And uh, thank you for tuning in with us. So, if you are watching um, on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, um, do remember every round when we have a session with our guests, you are always uh, welcome to key in any uh, for questions that you want to ask relating to today's topic. So you can just key in right in the comment section down below, and then later we will feature your question. Uh, and then we will do our best to answer as many questions as we can. So, uh, going straight to today's topic, uh, before I bring on the guests uh, of today, we have a very special guest. And uh, I think this this topic um, is a very under, understated topic because uh, a lot of people probably do not know what is uh, Chartered Surveying all about. And uh, today we have uh, a guest who is an expert uh, when it comes to Chartered Surveying. Uh, he wears many hats, so maybe just a brief introduction before I bring him on to our show. So uh, today we have Jake, and Jake is the director of Zach LC, and Zach LC uh, specializes in, in interior renovation and construction. And uh, guess what? He is also a certified chartered surveyor with RICS, which is the, the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyor. And this is a worldwide recognition um, kind of uh, certification that um, once you have it, um, then you can be an official professional chartered surveyor. Uh, he is also a resident surveyor with Absolute Inspection who does um, a lot of inspection works for uh, properties that are obtaining TOP. And um, uh, the fourth hat that he's wearing is he's, he's right now an adjunct lecturer with the BCA Academy. And uh, he is... Um, at current lecturing students uh, in the diploma course with BCA Academy and he specializes in, in teaching project management and technical drawing. So he has a lot of things on his plate uh, and he's not very old. He's quite a young young dad and uh, I think I'll, I'll bring him on and then we'll, we'll, we'll chat from there. Hi, Jake. Hello, Jake. Are you here? Hey, hello. Yes. Hi, hi, hi Jake. How are you? Hi, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Thank you I'm for good. having me. Me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, based on my introduction, I think you wear like four hats. I mean, how 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 do you do this? How do you do this? And then you're you're a, a father as well, you know. Like, how, how do you run your business yet teaching people at the same time and stuff? Yeah, maybe maybe for for our audience, just just give a brief introduction about. about sure, 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 sure. Sure, sure, thank you, thank you. Again, I'm Jake uh, from ZL Construction. Uh, this is actually a third generation family business. Family business. Yeah. Right. So we we started really uh, so doing we started uh, really doing uh, FMB, uh, FMB, uh, those uh, shop houses. But then over the, the decades, over the, the decade, we have uh, really moved on to residential yeah. projects mostly. Projects yeah. Mostly. Then the, the other yeah, part of me is also the doing uh, the charter so surveying doing, part. Uh, charter surveying part. Yeah, so we'll talk more about the charter yeah, surveying so part later, but uh, that is also because of my interest to dwell deep into the industry. Yeah, then in terms of the yeah, teaching the part, of I'm of the nature part, of uh, nurturing. So, so I really like uh, so really teaching. Like, uh, so this has been a task I've been doing for the past six, seven years. This is Academy. So the sense of satisfaction to nurture new young adults, I think that's satisfying. Yeah, yeah, then the other part about the parent, I think this is the part about having a supportive family, <laughs> supporting family, wife, yeah, and wife taking the, the, the fourth head as the dad. The and that, that is really, uh, uh, yep, about, about us. Yeah, about us. Okay, Grace, it's, it's great having you. I mean, it's not easy to find an expert in chartered surveying. And I think our audience will be very keen to know what is, what is this topic all about and how can it help them when it comes to buying their property and when it comes to um, maybe if it's a landed before they rebuild during and after and where does chartered surveying actually comes in? Because I, I think this topic 
um, has not been well um, so-called like um, populated in a sense yeah. whereby a lot of people probably are, are not in tune with this this exact term. So I, I think today is great having you, Jake. And uh, maybe before we dive into the topic, just want to chat, you know, how how, how, is, how has like uh, COVID-19 during the circuit breaker, how has it been for the, the renovation industry? I mean, last week we had, we had, um, uh, last week we had uh, the co-founder of Canvas with us. And then mm. we chatted a little bit about the mm. impact that it has on people's uh, consumers renovation timeline at the same time what are the impact for for renovation contractors as well so how has it been like since uh, phase one has reopened like how has the timeline been so mm. far for you okay so okay. um for the, so COVID, uh, since the covid uh, start right um the whole slew right. of measures the application the measure the direct, direct, direct impact is the contractors that's for sure the main contractor sure but the downstream of subcontractors, subcontractors, subcontractors i i think that these are the folks that's getting that is are the brunt of the the impact um somehow because as you go deeper down the value chain uh, they, this this skilled workers are usually very good in the trade, very good. So they may not be too savvy in terms of the application in paperwork. So that that actually has a bit of a tapering and like if you know. So as of now, uh, I, I would say that the main contractors, the big boys, are uh, more or mostly on board already. That means they're ready to go. But uh, I would say a good 40%, 50% of the downstream, you know, the really the specialist, specialist, the actual technical folks doing the work. Uh, if they are small outfit, one, two folks, they are small outfit, get one, all the necessary uh, Googles and all those, they, they, there's still a little bit of lag effect. So overall, like, um, yeah, the whole pack of timeline will, will be there. The other thing is also on the supply chain logistic portion. Supply chain logistic portion. So products to come from all over the world. So if we're talking about airport, seaport, there, there's still a direct impact. So I think uh, a word of question is that whatever the timeline is that we agreed or, or that the clients or folks are thinking of, I do do have a little bit of buffer in that. So anything from three to four weeks of buffer, I think it's a reasonable thing now. Right. So for example, if let's say somebody is renovating their condominium that they have just bought, uh, maybe before the circuit breaker and then they just receive their, their keys, to the resale property and usually i mean for condos if you're doing like some hacking works uh of the, yep. the bathrooms and maybe yep. laying the the entire place with vinyl tiles and and doing some uh wet works in the kitchen carpentry and stuff like that usually i mean for condominiums because of the the stricter timelines for the contractor to exit and enter the place right it's usually about two months to maybe three yep. months right so yep. Yep. um for now yep. uh, because i understand that um there are some restrictions like um, you mentioned previously and probably over some of the media is that contractors now can have to take turns to, to go in. I mean, different mm -hmm. subcons have to take turns, right? So uh, for, for this kind of project, let's say if it's like three or four bedroom condominium resale, um, what is the, the best time frame right now planning forward towards phase one and phase two? Like, uh, yeah. will, will we still so, put two yeah. months another so, four weeks or something? Yeah, so so I will add that that um to coincide with what I shared earlier on, if it's a standard timeline of say two months to three months, two minutes, uh, do, do factor about uh, three weeks or uh, four four weeks extra. Yeah, because uh, as part of the safe uh, measures in the start, uh, is um, re recommended. I would say mandated uh, You know that uh, at any one point, uh, there should be only one team of uh, trade to be in. So as opposed to previous time where where you can coincide to have five trades, six trades all together, but now because of uh, avoiding uh, eliminating any cross contamination or not, I would say cross passing of this uh, potential, uh, uh, you know, issue. So so that that is really the things have to go sequential. So definitely the timeline would be like, so again, back to that, it's uh, okay. only a three to four weeks extra uh, four to factor all the cushioning. That would be good. Cushioning. Right, right. Because that, that affects uh, usual home buyers because probably some of them are currently renting at the moment or they are during the transition phase. Maybe they're staying with their parents and stuff. So I, I think having yeah. known the timeline from your end will, will definitely help everybody to plan uh, better. I mean, uh, not to mention, I mean, for rebuilding, I mean, let's say if it's a landed property, somebody uh, is planning to tear down and rebuild, definitely this process will be much lengthened as well. What, what, what do you think? 
Yeah, I think home. definitely so. Definitely so. Uh, for construction uh, projects, rebuilding A and A, this is a whole level of uh, compliance again. So renovation in the comp in the realm of this application is the easier route. When you come to the construction side, there's a whole host of uh, SDO, SMO, and uh, the, the the regime that's involved will be much much more. So so I I will again uh, factor in uh, whatever the timeline that uh, we agreed on based on the scope. Uh, do factor a good at least 20-20% more extra buffer. Factor that. Um, yeah. Again, the, the, the part for uh, rebuilding for construction works, uh, the supply chain will be will be much affected. Again, because the quantum is larger in terms of the area, the, the element, the building element, the items. So again, the bigger the impact the item is, uh, you are expecting the lead time, the people involved, the logistics involved, the installers involved will be will be magnified. So factor, I would say 20% extra time buffer for that. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think th for this um this this season, I mean definitely this this impact will probably drag on for a little bit. Uh, with with the the safety um, measures and safe opening and stuff, so I mean this is something that everybody will have to uh, get used to, I I, I think, and um, yeah maybe let's let's uh, head on to today's uh, topic right, Talk, talking about chartered surveying. Sure. Uh, what is what is chartered surveying? <laughs> how, okay, how we, so so this is you are right. Uh, this is a little known uh, uh, profession and in the whole industry. But this, uh, the importance and uh, the usage of a charter survey is very prevalent in the UK and the Scotland, which is where it originated in RSES from Scotland. So the whole idea of it is that being a charter surveyor, it represents the highest standing, the qualification in the built industry. So within the built industry, there are a lot of divisions of expertise. They could be feasibility studies, they could be valuation, project management, uh, a lot more other stuff, yeah? So, so at the end of the day, um, this association, they want to recognize that being the pinnacle of the expert domain knowledge and how you exhibit the domain knowledge to then execute the works out in the ground. Yeah. So, so for myself, I specialize in two ways. One is the building surveying portion as well as the project management portion. So and in, in terms of uh, how this uh, uh, charter surveyor can come in. We, we call ourselves BS, uh, building surveyors. Uh. Uh, how how do we live here? Yeah, building surveyors. So it sounds a bit <laughs> BS. Uh. So how the uh, charter surveyor can come in really is that uh, there are three stages how it really can be very effective. One is what we talk about, pre-purchase. Pre -purchase. So pre-purchase is the fact that uh, before we invest in any property, in Singapore especially property, it's a key asset. And, and we're talking about, uh, you know, breaking the millions and so on and so forth. So we are, we are thinking that you know, before you make the big ticket item, a charter surveyor, which is familiar with all the construction sequences, I wouldn't say all, but a majority, the key ones and the, the important, the critical ones, be involved, head down, see if there's anything that is non-compliant. If we talk about landed, so we can immediately, we can spot certain non-compliance or we can spot certain inherent issues that may potentially tantamount to something greater to rectify that. Or it could be also meaning that there's certain encroachment, there's certain uh, deep-rooted issues. So if we if we can flag it out, I think to a home buyer potentially we can identify these issues. Uh, it can then translate to uh, you know other other means of uh, measure like uh, negotiation in pricing or anticipating the renovation budget uh, meant for that. So so that the pre-purchase portion will be useful in the essence. Yeah. In the same, on the same right. note for pre-tendency, uh, so some uh, commercial landlords and uh, clients also touch base with us. We also have this uh, so-called pre-tendency survey. So yeah, so before you rent a premise out, uh, be a home, a landed mm -hmm. office or not, you, you take note of all the things, you document it down in a very professional way on how we do a, a building surveying and you have a very thorough report. So you minimize any ambiguous uh, portion, you know, you do, I do, you know, who do. So at the end of the tenancy, it proves that hey, there is this report there and then everything has a baseline. So it's easy to document this now. Yeah. So, so this is the before. The tenancy, right? Is, is it usually, uh, um, uh, is this service usually used by the landlords or the tenants when, when just on what you mentioned, the, the pre-tenancy yeah. report? T -t Typically, it's the landlord. 
yeah. They believe it's a landlord. They yeah, they, a because landlord. I think they want to safeguard against any uh, allegations or any any miscommunication. So usually it's the landlord. Uh, so far the folks that are aware of it are usually the bigger boys, uh, bigger real estate uh, firms and uh, bigger landlords. So so they usually uh, want to make sure everything is watertight. Yeah. So this is uh, the recommended one. So we move to another broad level. It's after you purchase the house. So what next? Um, so this is when a charter survey will come in, the building survey will come in to do as a external validator in terms of a project management uh, part. Um, we, we don't talk too much on the interior design and uh, contractor portion. Yeah, So share more on the building surveying portion. Uh, we notice the trend that folks nowadays, uh, clients nowadays are very, very savvy. They know everything on the inside out, you know, speaking of Canvas, Renopedia, they, they basically got the information on what they want. Uh, and pricing is very transparent. They are very aware of that. So they have the knowledge, information, they have the pricing, but what lacks is the execution. The execution. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the execution portion. So now uh, the building surveyor will come in or Charter's yeah. building surveyor will come in as a project manager to say, well, for this kind of pricing, kind of pricing it translates to what kind of action to be done. So if it's too cheap, then the building survey will say, well, based on the industry trend, based on the methodology that is doing, actually there's no way the pricing can be this cheap or this expensive. Or this yeah. Expensive. So, so mean, it, um, it comes from validation. I mean like when, validation. when I got a quotation from uh, an ID, mm. and then, uh, the charter surveyor can help me to validate, is this like doable? Yes. Are you talking about this, this yes. approach? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Right. This, is, this is something that within uh, the, the small fraternity, folks are actually uh, speaking to, to, to us. They say, hey, I got five quotations. Uh, you know, I, everybody has a different way of writing. Is there a baseline or way of how to interpret this thing? So, so we actually help uh, quite a few bit of uh, clients that, that, that they, they really want a second opinion, uh, even to decipher, hey, whoa, how come this is so cheap or how come this is so expensive? Right, right. Because because uh, I think one fear that a lot of people have when it comes to renovating their home is that um, the quotation might be one quote, but after they sign on the dotted line, they pay the deposit, and then there's like a lot of add-ons later on, which yes. um, they they probably uh, did not foresee that it has uh, be became uh, like this in the first place. Uh. It, it, yep. Is it something that um, this, this charter survey can actually cover? Yes, this is exactly what we are trying to find a gap. So, so you, in fact, a couple of our recent examples that we did was that, well, the pricing is very attractive. So we told the client, well, this pricing can be done, but only if they exclude a certain portion of it. So if you want to ensure it's watertight, uh, when you sign on the dotted line, do include to say that this step must be included as part of the deal. So as we advise them, as they proceed to sign with the other, uh, you know, proceed on with the next event. So then they recognize that, hey, that step was not included in. Uh, so they are able to identify certain pitfalls in that manner. Yeah. Right. So at the end of the day, um, I think it, it aims to really help the client make a better decision. We are not trying to undermine or you know uh, uh, disrupt the pricing mechanism, but rather uh, at the end of the day, the clients must be sure that the money they are paying for is a value uh, uh, product. Okay, got it. Mm, yeah. Right. So, so you you mentioned yeah. pre-purchase. Uh, that's where chartered surveyor come in. Mm. Uh, Pre-renovation after the purchase. Right. You guys right. come in and then yep. the next is like after yep. after the renovation yeah the next one is the after uh we again don't talk about the, the negative negative part first the after i uh, usually do a validation of the work done validation on the work done so more often than not uh you know we, we consider 80 percent of people will be happy with mostly of the items so um when we're happy with the work usually the charter survey won't come in uh, but there are also sometimes that you needed a second opinion to come in to say well if this is the spec that was mentioned if this is the material that was quoted can you come by to do a validation on whether is it correct that's the first tier then the other tier would be that well in terms of the methodology are you do are you doing in a secret uh, correct sequential manner you know whether is it from a top-down approach whether is it the waterproofing is done in the correct screening the base code of painting is it correct or not so there, there will be some more deeper um, uh, i would say the scrutiny on that part so that's 80 percent of the folks uh, usually that will not tend to mount to a building surveyor services uh, the other 20 percent i would say is the more unfortunate cases where the builders or the designers or the contractors um are being are being uh are challenged by the homeowners it could be the other way around it, vice versa it could be the other way around so that's when they need a second opinion to come in uh, to take 
things in a more professional level. Then uh, at the end state is uh, remediation, or it could be end state into be litigation, or it end state could be just uh, to a to a court case. Yeah. So so again, we have been involved in a different capacity. Um, the the fact is that um, because of the complexity of the building environment. There are so many traits. There can be sub traits from uh, wet works, tiling, carpentry, porcelain, painting, superstructure, structure. There are so many. But for, to the eyes of the court, uh, they can't be talking to 10 or 20 different sub uh, contractors for all cases. So it's a norm in, in practice to say that, okay, I only want a single joint expert. I only want a single expert. And this expert uh, can only be a building surveyor which has an appreciation of all the different subtrades all combined to one. So I may not be the expert in, say, waterproofing, in tiling, but I understand the relationship with one another and the lack of one or the other that will impact the rest of the subtrade. So this is where I think the building surveyor comes in to give a very independent uh, expert witness uh, report. Then with all these facts, then the judge uh, you know, will make a judgment call, will make the fair assessment on uh, what's the impact to the, to the plaintiff or to the, to the other folks. Yeah, so this is where the pre-purchase, post-purchase, and post-completion for renovation that you will come in. You will come in. Right. So um, if I'm hearing correctly, uh, this will definitely extends to all forms of properties right like um does it extend to hdb properties condos and landed all three forms of properties or even like commercial properties and stuff like that uh is there a restriction to what kind of properties uh charter surveying can be applied to uh, there's no form of restriction uh it straddles across all form of uh, built environment it can be home hdb condo landed offices as well so it can straddle across all property types Okay, great. So I, I think this is really good information because um, I, th I think a lot of people don't even know about the existence of this kind of service. So so what, what you're trying to say is that charter surveying is like a, a personal advisor with the, the consumer throughout the, the whole renovation process. Or maybe if let's say somebody's rebuilding, a, a, they bought a land, they want to rebuild a landed home, uh, that is where you guys come in as well, right? Mm. So uh, on that part, yes, but lesser of that because on that note, already a, when we talk about rebuilding, definitely the whole QP uh, panel has to come in, your PE has to come in, your architect has to come in. So most of the time, um, these, are, these are taken care by the QPs. But building surveyor will be coming mostly at the built environment, so meaning there is something there, uh, the be before and after. Yeah, most of the time is the built oh. environment uh, already, not, 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 not uh, specifically more for the rebuilding purposes. Right, right. Build environment means that it is the brick and mortar is already done. It's, it's yeah. The, the Enhancing, a bit of ret retrofitting, renovation, uh, the cost, uh, validation. Yeah, mostly on those parts. Okay. Great. So, um, advise us, like, um, how over the, the past years, uh, has this been very popular with consumers? And um, usually how many people use like on a percentage if you have, I mean, if you don't have, it's fine, but uh, has it been very popular that, that consumers use this kind of approach? Yeah, uh, I think the recent, I would say three years, it has been picking up. Uh, it's always by word of mouth because they don't even know the existence of a surveyor. And and uh, I will always mention that the surveyor, it's a very unique uh, unique, unique position where it ha they have to know in, in some way the theory uh, but it can only be sharpened with the ground hands-on knowledge. So, so it, it takes a, a little bit of both. You can be very good in academic, but if you are not on ground, you may not know. While well, somebody on ground, they are very good in doing, but they may not know the compliance. So, so it's a very unique blend. So I, I guess uh, we are also very lucky and very privileged to, to be in this position. So the pickup, the takeout rate is more and more. Uh, we are taking, we are seeing both ends uh, more aggressively. So meaning the pre-purchase portion, as well as the post uh, renovation part. Uh, but that is not so something to shout about because that's usually tantamount to a dispute resolution solution where our opinion, our comments has to come in to, <laughs> to be used by either parties. So, but more on the pre-purchase portion, uh, there are a lot more significant uh, take up for, for pre-purchase for landed property. Because as we all know, landed property is scarce and is a high value asset uh, item. So they are usually, uh, you know, one thing or second opinion to come by. So having a contractor is fine. Having an ID is fine. Everything is perfect. 
So uh, the challenge is always that the ID contractor or the other professionals, they are able to know one facet, but the other facet say on the execution, the compliance, the costing, the repercussion. So somehow that the little parts, uh, the building surveyor can fill in those gaps. So I think I would say that uh, over, over the past couple of years, uh, we are seeing every year about a 20%, 30% increase for, for folks who take up for landed property purchase, landed property purchase. So it's a pre, pre-purchase uh, uh, site survey. How about, how about for, for private apartments and, and for public housing? Like is there, is there an increased trend of people using, using charter surveying service? Uh, for those are usually for the middle and the, I would say the second stage and the third stage, more of those stage. Uh, again, I think the quantum, uh, you know, when we talk about purchasing a two, three, four, five million property, um, I think the, the opportunity cost, uh, again, uh, opportunity cost to purchase a uh, lemon, uh, I think it's more, more heavy on that part. So for homes in condos and HDB, a lot more are uh, engaging us for the validation process, which is the middle part. They have a lot of uh, quotes, a lot of proposals. They want us to validate hey, which one makes sense or not. Yeah. So this is when we come in, we give a verbal, give a simple uh, watered down, uh, I mean, a more, a more, a more, I would say palatable uh, report that a home buyer will understand. Uh, and the other part is also on the dispute part, lah. you know, coming with a defects checklist. That is also coming out quite a fair bit. Coming out quite a fair bit. Okay, right. So how many charter surveyors are there in Singapore? <laughs> uh, there are, again, as I mentioned, charter surveyors, they are. Uh, the, the bulk of them are charter surveyors for, for land survey, for area survey, for valuation. So they are surveyors. They are also under a broad category of surveyors. Yeah. So I would say um, active building surveyors, uh, they are probably less than 10. Maybe less than 10. Active building surveys, less than 10. Yeah. So and how, how how does somebody get, get certified? Like, you know, how if let's say somebody wants to engage a charter survey, how do they know that this person is certified? Like, what does the government recognize, you know, in terms of certification and, and stuff like that? Right. Okay, so Singapore that in RSCS, there's a uh Asian headquarter. Uh so it's also RSCS SG dot org SG. It's uh they, they have HQ in Singapore, they have an office in Singapore. So what they, ni- they did it nicely is that on the HQ registrar, they list out all the surveyors in Singapore. So if you go and go, uh, scroll down, they are able to see the surveyors. So how, what does it take to be a surveyor is that it's, prob- it's, a, it's a long journey. It's probably like what a chartered accountant, uh, chartered insurance agent, you know, along the, 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 the form of training. Uh, as a baseline, you probably you need to be involved in the whole trade for close to 10 years uh, with a good documentation log, with a mentor, taking key roles in the company, uh, basically doing very in-depth uh, case studies to, yeah. to exhibit that. Yeah. So having done your, we call it the APC, lah, you know, the professional route training. Uh, once that is done, um, you have to go through a series uh, of interviews. Uh, so, so before the whole COVID and the whole setup was that every year they will schedule four interviews. They will fly down the uh, UK, Scotland uh, assessors and you will sit in front of the panel to have an interview on all your projects and case study. So again, once that is done ready, um, the evaluation is done, then they will inform you of your, your, your results. Uh, so once that, the, the thing is done ready, you'll be given then your certification and, and then yeah, you'll be recognized under, under Singapore that RICS uh, Charter Surveyor. Yeah, so you'll be recognized under that already. So, so Singapore, what you're saying is that Singapore only re- um, recognizes um, Charter Surveyors from RICS, which is Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyor, which is yes. a UK yes. certification. Yes. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, yes. it sounds sound very stringent. <laughs> yes, it is. We <laughs> forget yes, it. it. Right. And I think the combination of like having like 10 years experience before you're awarded this certification is really um, a, a form of validation that, you know, that the, the experience will come into play. Uh, not just theory, it's also experience, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. So right. if if we are not working in a, in an environment, you basically have to do a lot more uh, documentation. You know, to be under a mentor for two years, write the journal, and the logbook. So th- there's a lot of preparation logbook, which is I think the the way forward, and this is the way it should be done. That uh, the person holding the the title, 
should be able to represent in a very uh, comprehensive manner on the whole built environment. So, so I, I agree on the stringent uh, requirements, and I think it should continue this way. Continue this way. Right. So, um, I mean, as as let's say as as a consumer, I think one one key question is always like the costing involved mm. to to mm. engage a charter surveyor. I mean, based on what uh, I've seen so far, is like this this person will be like my my advisor, right? So it's, it's right. a sort of an objective right. professional point of view. Um, right. So it safeguards my interest right. as a consumer. So how much does it cost? Let's say for example, let's say somebody bought a two million dollar apartment, right? And it's right. a recent property. Right. Uh, they need to do from I mean, maybe like two hundred thousand for renovation, and right. um, maybe right. they will only get a charter surveyor for the the middle portion, the validation. Mm. They are going mm. to be everything right mm. so right maybe they are getting someone right. in for the validation usually what is the range of fees involved mm. like does the range of fees mm. curtail among the size of the apartment um mm. is it usually this way or is it like the length of the the project and stuff like that how, how, how does right. the fee range? Right, right. It's a good question. So, um, how how usually the methodology of the pricing is is usually based on two factors. Uh, number one is the area, the GFA, because that will be seen how much leg work that uh, potentially the charter surveyor has to embark on. Yeah, the the GFA. The other is the contract sum. So, so these two tie hand in hand with one another. So, yeah, so as a very broad stroke, right? Uh, so if I'm just doing a project, say thousand two square feet. Uh, uh, project value, yeah, again, back to your, so uh, back to your, back to your example, it's about 200,000, 2 mil. So uh, when we talk about this kind of quantum, um, so the, uh, assuming again, we have to validate, um, say three quotes, yeah, three quotes, then to help, to, yeah, say five quotes, now, okay, say five quotes, then we, we want to uh, execute in the project management. So to validate the quotes itself, uh, usually, the amount of man hours we take about like two days to do that, it will quantify to be to validate per quotation, it's about two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Then to execute the project management portion, yeah, to, it's about to anything from two to four thousand. Yeah. Again, depending on the complexity, whether you're importing marble from Italy and, and you know the whole whole list goes on. Yeah. So so at a very high level, it can be as uh, as as cost effective as a couple of hundred just to validate the number. Or it can be very intense of uh, X percent of the contract sum. It can be as simple as that. You know, say one percent, two percent of the contract sum, just to make sure that things go in hand. Go in hand. Right. So, yeah. so you say that uh, it, it yeah. can be like probably per per quotation validation is about two hundred dollars, so or maybe five mm. quotation thousand. And then the other yes. part that you talk about project yes. management is that um, the 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 part of meaning like handling the entire project is it. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. So yes, because yes. now the, the the trend is that homeowners want to get themselves involved. They they basically solicit, they, they connect with all the 10, 12, 15 subcontractors. Uh, so which also means that they are the paymaster to their respective subcontractor. We are seeing quite a fair bit of trend now. Uh, though on my on my perspective, I would recommend that because I feel that uh, this trade uh, is taking can take quite a fair bit of time. So leave it to the to the folks, the professional to do that. Um, so what we do is that we try if we talk about the former where the folks uh, the homeowners want to interface with the with the with the vendors directly then we'll come in to tell you that okay this is time where the aircon should come in well this is the time where the partition man should come in now this is the time the parking man should come in so we will come into it on that part yeah but if no you are already awarded and appointed somebody uh, you want then uh, a surveyor a building surveyor to come in to execute the whole project as a project manager yeah, with your nominated subcontractors, and that's that's a different skill altogether, lah. That's a different skill altogether. Oh, so, I see, I see. Okay, mm, it's like if mm. if I need somebody in the middle to handle mm. all my subcons, mm. then there's a project management kind of quotation and stuff. But yes. if let's say if I yeah. really I'm I'm intending to appoint an ID firm that does everything, right? Then basically right. it will be more of the the validation portion right correct 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 so okay. on, on that note then we were just coming to say well this amount is definitely reasonable and this is way and we will be involved in the sense that uh in, in the whole communication chain so meaning in the whatsapp group or whatnot uh if they have pointed out that this is the sequence of work if again based on our domain knowledge well this is this might not be the best way uh politely we will give some suggestions and maybe this is the way we can better it uh, on on the way we do it in terms of time scheduling, scheduling. Mm. So what are, what are some of the the 
um, maybe if it's if it's possible, maybe just you do do not have to code project specific. Maybe just some case studies, right? Uh, right. If let's say we're talking about right. um, an apartment that has been very well renovated, and then somebody's paying a premium for it, you know, maybe right. the, the bank for this apartment right. is like two mil, but because of the renovation that's so extensive and it's very recent, maybe in the past three years, it has, it has been beautifully done up. Um, the the buyer is going to buy it for like maybe two point two million dollars above valuation right. and stuff. So, right. Um, right. What does uh what are what are probably some case studies that you have seen before or personally handled before that, uh, because of the involvement of the chartered surveying work, mm. um, uh, mm. there are, there are things that the owners have prevented, um, and probably may, maybe they are still going ahead to buy it. It's just mm. that they have false knowledge of mm. what is being expected in, in terms of the condition and stuff so and, and what do you guys do like you know when do your guys come in like before the owner make a before the buyer makes an offer mm. uh, you is it the mm. time that you guys come in and then you guys take a look and stuff like you know how, how do you handle that kind right of, right uh, yeah this, this is a very good scenario so um i will just cite one of the the case study that we did uh, again no mention of um, names and whatnot so this is a purchase of a very nice uh, landed property uh, again in somewhere in district 19 or so yeah so the, it was a beautiful uh, two-story uh, inter-terrace and, and uh, the client has, uh, the prospect has, uh, has very grand plans. Uh, it was very nicely renovated. Uh, a lot of very nice oriental Chinese China uh, product and very high-end parquet, oak wood material, all very, very good stuff. So so when when the minute we go in, again, this is a one-time uh, so pre-purchase uh, 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 visit. So prior to the visit, the client already told me that he has prepared the check to give to the seller already, already prepared. So he just wanted a second opinion to ensure that uh, we are on the same track, everything is fine. So as we went in, uh, we, we excused the, the seller agent to be waiting outside. So we went in and walked one round uh, to validate. So immediately there were a few things that caught my eye. So, um, But to the intended buyer, everything is perfect, it's beautiful. So after we went in, I we, what we did was really we we are using our laser pointer and you know we we'll point out to the to the couple of area on positions. So after we done with the visit, uh, we went out of the premise. I highlighted to the client with a few things. He said that client, if you notice the the bedroom and the toilets, uh, the level difference is not normal. It's not normal. So again, to 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 a buyer, they say this is nothing. What no big deal. What? So I said that you remember the laser pointer which I pointed to you, uh, which 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 I didn't find the level difference, but when it associates to the wall, there was a very distinct uh, patch line and a crack. So they said there is no big deal. There's nothing. What? So I, then I explained a bit further to say that this property, there is a sinking issue. Issue. This property, mm. half of it, the first one third is recessed and sunk, sinking in. So you said they didn't notice that. So I point out to the second laser point that you know the, the image that I showed them is that if you notice, uh, because of this sunken thing, the front porch, the whole cantilever car porch is sunk on one side already, and there are strict water marks coming down. So I said, well, this is a beautifully done place, but because of soil movement or any other uh, external factors. In order to regularize this to ensure there's no leaking issue, no war issue, and no other issues, you probably have to spend a couple of hundred k to 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 regularize this. Um, so I think how do you how how do you this? Let's say if I'm the if I'm the owner of this house that is sinking, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. How how do yeah. how do I solve the problem? The, the correct way is to of course to engage the PE already. You engage the PE, then ensure that your foundation, your slab. Uh, your ground beam are all well catered for. You have to do your uh, soil and you know movement measuring tests and all qualified. Make sure there's no external factor. Then if the structures are not sufficient, you have to brace it. You have to add in. So this is basically ripping out whatever end finishes you have it inside. So so at, at that point, I really pointed out to say that hey, this is cannot like this is this these things will tantamount to this ap uh, approach. Uh, so how it impacts uh, the the agent or impact the sale was that. They have that in mind already. So whatever they intended to offer, they lowered by by certain amounts. So, but in the end, so in a way, the sale didn't go through because uh, 
Oh, they didn't go through. Okay. They didn't go through because what? they said that, well, in order to rectify this, this is the amount I'm going to incur. So, so which is why I say that, um, say that this building survey is a very uh, integrity versus uh, uh, salesmanship kind of uh, gray line. So for us, we are guided by our virtual and the integrity that um, we, we need to really point out the facts that will affect the livelihood and lifestyle and the safety portion. So as opposed to salesmanship, you know, da 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 da. So, uh, so this is a case where the sale didn't proceed because they anticipated that wow, this is the amount of work to make it work. <laughs> so that is the right. example. Mm. Right, right, right. But I believe definitely the the client is very thankful that this has been spotted, right? And right, uh, right. Yeah, I I think uh, as per what you mentioned just now, in terms of opportunity cost, because the lender probably is a larger ticket item and. Mm amount of rectification that has been done sometimes is, is really um, to a large extent. So it's, it's very, very well intended for this money to be spent on, on the, the pre-inspection, right? So so let's say if it's like a, a semi-D land mm. is about maybe about 4,000, right? Uh, right? Or maybe 3,000, 4,000, right. built up maybe 6,000. Mm. Uh, usually how much does the pre-purchase evaluation cost in terms mm. of the, the Inspection. Understood. So, so um, we we offer a few uh, two distinct in a way a mode lah, because uh, many a times when people buy right, it is probably at the stage where they are ready to give the check already. Most of the time, it's this way already. They're ready to give the check, so they want a very quick yeah. assessment. But they don't have time to wait for a full report. Uh, so that is the again the eighty percent of the people. So um, that one we will give a very quick verbal run through, quick verbal run through. So. That, that amount really are uh, to walk through the whole premise for 6,000 square feet. It probably take about uh, two hours, one and a half, two hours. So that verbal rundown or description or everything, it, it, it ranges again from 400 to $600, really to just walk through and tell you what the immediate pitfalls. But uh, some folks is say, okay, after saying, hey, Jake, still give me a full report. I want to at least document it down. <laughs> so uh, if you want a report, uh, usually it's about 1,002 with all the things listed down based on uh, a scene basis and uh, based on whichever date we conducted the visual inspection. Yeah, so 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 that is the range uh, from a verbal, it can be anything from 400, from a written inspection with a sign off, it can be 1,200. But again, this is a visual, it is non-invasive, you don't use equipment to punch through or whatnot, it's just a verbal inspection. A bit of visual experience and, and, and stuff. So so right. I would say safely, I mean, if it's a semi is below 1,005, for this um, pre-inspection to be done, just to safeguard your interest, right? Yeah, right. that's so, right. Uh, that's right. Okay, so so uh, talking about the the case that you had, right, for for landed property, uh, how about for apartments? Like, were, were there any case studies, if any, uh, for apartment basis? Yeah. Like, yeah, mm, apartment each. apartment basis and uh no for pre purchase no but it's more of really the middle portion where they they've done a certain renovation they wants to validate whether is this the material the specs that was coated yeah it's more of those no pre purchase again i think it's maybe a, a huge factor is the ticket item uh, for the purchase of the property plus plus probably like strata properties as as mcst if, if it's really leaking from external wall and stuff that mcst can 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 help with that yeah right so yes right uh, yeah. um yeah i i think it will also be be very useful to to maybe share like uh, your uh because right now you're currently an, an adjunct lecturer right in bca academy right mm, and yes. all that you are like a resident surveyor with absolute inspection right, right. and uh absolute right. inspection i understand that uh those 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 guys are probably some of your your friends or partners, they, they do inspection checks for properties that are TOP already. Yes. What, what is your role? Yes. I mean, as, as a, firstly, as a adjunct lecturer with BCA and then plus a resident surveyor, okay. what, what do you do there? Right. As an adjunct lecturer in BCA, I basically teach over there. I, I teach. So um, it started sometime in 2012, 201112. Uh, yeah. So I, I started uh, with, with my classmates, my old batchmates from many ways. They, they were just saying, hey, Jake, are you keen to, to share your building knowledge and all those stuff? So I said, why not? I took it as a challenge for part-time you know, teaching. So one year led to after another, I enjoyed teaching. And uh, interestingly, 
uh, when I was teaching there, I I think I was not a very good. No, no, like, I think I'm a very good teacher in the sense that I always put challenge on on, on the plate to say that well, if you ace this project, you're able to intern at my at my company. If you can uh, be the top in student, you're able to do a special project in your free time and you know things like that. Being a challenge, uh, different challenges for them. So it turned out that uh, a couple of them um, really took the challenge out and they said, well, sir, I got the best in the class. I want to work during the holidays for, for your job. Uh, of course, all legit one, it's all Singaporeans. And so again, one thing led to another, they took a uh, flexi, they took a contract. Then eventually it turned out to be uh, our, in, our new staff, uh, the junior director, junior designer. Then it progressed to a lead designer. And prog yeah, progress to uh, to uh, to really the the team lead for for the designing. So in fact, uh, within ZL, the lead uh, renderers creator they are all from BC Academy. So that that in some way while nurturing it becomes a sort of like a, a talent uh, attraction point. So and uh, because of the fact that we are teaching on uh, project management and technical drawing. Uh, we are able to know the details of, say, how thick the plywood is, how much drawer offset you need to give, how much is your uh, finger groove, what is the typical thickness of, a, you know, the quartz table, and how does it interface. We, we are more delicate in that respect when it comes to the construction sequencing. So that is the, my involvement in the BC Academy part as the teacher, and then sort of like a, a talent attraction point also like, to, for, for, that, for that BC Academy part. So for resident... Uh, Surveyor in chapter surveying is again also by a stroke of chance. Uh, got to got in touch with the founder of uh, Absolute Inspection. Uh, we we shared um, a very high level of uh, mission and vision to say that we want to make the built environment a better place. So again, by a stroke of chance, we 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 had a couple of projects uh, inspecting together. Then um, we started conducting a few webinars, courses online for, for real estate agents as well for, you know, to teach about how to spot defects, uh, what are the certain high level kind of compliance and stuff. So um, we, we, we got the rapport and we thought it was good. Then as, as things develop further, um, projects get a bit more sophisticated um, from the founder side, absolute inspection side, they say, well, the projects are getting more and more sophisticated. They needed a charter surveyor to be involved. So he, he invited me to say, hey, why not we just, you know, be on the, you, I invite you to be on the board of uh, absolute inspection. So when it comes to uh, cases and more complex solutions, uh, we can bundle together where um, absolute inspection side, they are really the, the ground staff. They are really the people, the experts that conduct the search, the, the, the defects checking. Then for myself, I will come in to certify in a whole very high level basis and to take the report and take the findings in, in a more legalistic manner, in a more substantial manner to take it further to other projects. So this is where the arrangement and uh, the whole, whole being, the whole development came by. Right. And, and how about like ZLC? I mean, your, your main your main company that you're running day to day, what, what are your, your unique positionings? Because I understand um, you guys have your, like your own carpentry yes. workshop yeah, stuff, yeah, right? Yes, like, yes, yeah. yes. So what's some of the things that you guys do over there? Well, thank you for giving me the airtime for, for this part. Like, because uh, again, <laughs> well, um, really ZL is my, ZLC uh, is really our blood and soul for the whole, whole, uh, whole right, life. Yeah, this is a family business. It started from my grandfather uh, to my dad. My dad is still very active in the business and I'm now the third generation taking in charge. So uh, we are unique. The really unique part about us is that we are a heritage business. So started in 1986. So I think we've been through quite a fair bit of up and down. Um, over the years, I think we have built enough domain knowledge, the technical resilience, and and the, the really the the weathering of the, those un, uh, uncertain climate. So that is the part where it's very deep rooted, and this is more so during this climate uh, that uh, we have a lot of prospect of clients after going big round. They say, "Well, I still choose uh, ZLC because uh, I I I don't know whether the rest can survive." I say, "Well, thank you for the trust, and definitely we are keen to serve you." And the unique part about that is heritage. And the other two, it's uh, really the in-house guys, the, the in-house. We have our in-house uh, carpenter uh, and the in-house tallers. So this, if you combine the two, this is the biggest two uh, ticket item in any renovation. 
the carpentry and the tiling, the wet works. So this is within our in-house control. So quality, time and co time and cost and quality. I mean, time, cost, quality, this, these three plays together. We, we are able to mani you know, manipulate and manage it very, very well. I think this is the really, really unique part about us. Yeah, I think then the third part, uh, or rather the fourth part that coincide with the overall thing is that uh, myself uh, it, it is a chartered building surveyor. So it adds to say that, well, everything I do, I'm very proud of it. I, I cannot mess it up. I cannot mess it up. So I always joke to my clients and prospects to say that if I mess it up, my grandfather and you know will jump up from the grave. Uh, so so it's, it's a fact that still now we, we stand very proud and we are very, very, um, you know, we honor what we say and really deliver what we, we promise. So this is really the, I would say the unique part about ZL. Yeah, and I can see the 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 kind of passion that you have for this industry. I mean, usually when somebody has passion in the in their their own industry, they usually want to have a broader range, um, generalist approach. While you have a a, a deep rooted specialization, but at the same time, you contribute to to beef up the whole professionalism of the industry as well by being a surveyor, by by helping out with absolute inspection, and plus at the same time you teach as well to give back yep. to this particular industry um I have, I have one question i mean if because just now what we mentioned is the main users uh it seems like a lot of buyers uh probably like to have the chartered surveyor by their side when they when they go for renovation and purchase and stuff pre-purchase and stuff like that yeah. what about a seller if let's say example if I, i'm selling my place i'm selling my place um and right. i want to probably just have an assurance for the buyers that comes in Right, you know, like example, I'm selling my landed property. It's let's say a five million dollar landed property, semi D or something, mm -hmm. and the buyer that comes in, I, I want to have them to have a peace of mind. Right? Am mm -hmm. I able to engage a charter surveyor for the same kind of um purpose? Uh, but this is a reverse approach now. Yeah. I, I want to yeah. maybe yeah. A report yeah. on my table. You know, yes. When we talk yes. about stage, yes. offer stage, have a look at the report, man. It's it's, it's all transparent and stuff. So. Have you had sellers engage you before and how long does this report last? Right, like, right. It, like for, it's, it's, a, it's a superb question. This is a really a, a superb question. Yeah. So uh, sorry right. to interrupt you. Uh, so to jump to this is, this is what we call a condition survey. Yep. So right in the, from the Scotland, the UK portion, they actually have a very, very good guide on that to say that you stipulate all your conditions, then you put it on the table and you, you, you put it. Unfortunately, in Singapore, it's it's I, I think it has not never been heard yet, yeah, and and still a very uh, fresh idea to have somebody to qualify your conditions, your state before you sell. So uh, we are qualified and definitely prepared to do that. Uh, but as a matter of fact, uh, we have not done it yet because I think this idea, this notion of somebody, uh, is 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 raw, is new, and and the other thing we just want to highlight, it might be a, it might be a chicken and egg thing, is that. Um, many a times again because then the property is very scarce and a very valued property so most of the folks is that over the years they enhance value over it so be it doing an awning be it doing extension lean on fact anything yeah so yeah on, on the contrary by having a surveyor come in <laughs> it might identify things that you might not want to identify so it, it becomes yeah, it becomes like a double-edged sword instead. So again, just for open discussion, this is <laughs> it might factor that in. So this is like a totally new market that no sellers have mm -hmm. ever thought of, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I think maybe if the seller just want to know it for themselves to in order to see what kind of probable objections that might come up along the way of the marketing, they could do it for their own. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessary that they have to put it on the table, but it's probably for their own foreknowledge as the owner. Like, you know, how has my landed property deteriorated over the years? <laughs> yes, you know, yes. yes. spend spend that that money on the report at this point in time, lah. But right. yeah, I would just think, hey, right. you know, what if I'm an owner and I want to do it and stuff? Mm. Um, so, so you mentioned your your key audience mainly buyers and also landlords because landlords are, are concerned about the condition of their place two years or three years later after the tenancy, right? So um, is there also a rising trend of landlords doing that? And, and usually for landlords, what kind of properties do they do that? Is it also landed properties? Yeah, for landlords, they are mostly, uh, I would say those uh, commercial, uh, commercial black and white houses. Yeah, so, so they are mostly still geared towards the residential side. 
Right. Yeah. Okay. So the larger, larger properties in a sense. Yeah, correct. Okay. Correct. Great. Yeah, I, I think um this this uh session has been awesome, Jake. Thank thank you so much. Thank and you. and I think we want to open up to some questions if you have any questions. So if uh you guys are tuning in, uh I'm with Jake, uh the director of Zach LC, and he's also a chartered surveyor, which is one of probably the ten uh 10 to i'm not sure 10 to 12 chartered surveyors in singapore which which really is um, funded the royal institute of chartered surveying and uh, if you have any questions just uh key in the comment section whether you are with us on youtube facebook or instagram uh jake is happy to answer some of the questions so uh maybe jake while we're waiting for some questions to come in um where where do people find you i mean like what are what are some of the platforms that they can find you find out about your services and stuff like that right okay so we are all on the common uh, social media uh, platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, website. So you can website. check us out, ZL Construction, uh, just one word, or Instagram, ZLC underscore SG. And uh, we have a very good uh, board also on Pinterest, ZL Construction. You can check us out on that as well. So these are the usual norms. We, we are all there. All there. All right. Okay. So maybe one final question, right? Um, what, what do you think are some of the renovation trends um, coming up in the late 2020 and 2021 mm. in terms of the style of renovation if you're talking about apartments or uh, mm. i mean private apartments and hdb and stuff what what is the some of the renovation trends that uh, you're seeing to be very popular or is is upcoming right right it's, well i think of, right the, in terms of the the mood of uh renovation first uh just even before the theme and all those i think the way the business is going to be conducted is very very different now so because of the circuit breaker uh, digitization came in and uh, online uh, video conferencing coming in so so this is going to stay no matter what this is going to stay so uh we expect a lot of uh online consultation online site verification online briefing to your carpenters, online briefing to your plumbers, to, to that, yeah? Uh, so this is how the mode of the whole thing, the transformation has to be done. And, and uh, in fact, for our company, a lot of our peers are all doing it already. In terms of the trend of the industry, uh, I would say that the few is to get back to simplicity now. It really, the few is to get back to simplicity now. Um, because of the onset of uh, COVID-19, the pandemic, people are more prudent in spending so the bare necessity are still going to happen so meaning your base grid your tiling your floor kitchen your waterproofing your toilets uh carpentry standard ones water are still going to be there uh, but we talk about a little bit more stretch uh playing a bit of creativity you know nice uh timber ceiling feature walls i think that will taper down quite a fair bit i would think that that will taper down quite a fair bit um the whole simplicity the zen uh, feel it's it's the practicality precedes the aesthetics now more. Yeah, this is also when this is when also when uh, I think ZL has a slight edge, in the sense that um, I have my idea, I know what I want to do, I just want you to execute out. So this is really the the trend that we are seeing now. The practicality, um, no frills, more of that, fast free. Mm, maybe investing in, in more solid furniture and stuff, but in terms of the fixture and fittings, probably they will they will make it to be more minimalist kind of style up that's that's what yes. you're mentioning yes yes right great awesome awesome it's been great having you jake thank yeah. you uh thank you so much for for coming on on a wednesday 12 p.m uh i think it's, it's really great knowledge to for us to understand more about charter surveying and uh also uh this is before the purchase um before the renovation and of course after the renovation so uh, these three portions actually uh, if you have uh, any needs when it comes to renovating your place or maybe just before you buy a, a big ticket property item uh, you can engage a charter surveyor to help you with your having an objective point of view and advisor by your side just to, to spot out some of the things that you might want to know uh, you might still be definitely going ahead with the purchase but it will be good to know as in what is to come what's the potential amount you need to spend to rectify those mm. kind of issues and stuff like that so um it's been wonderful to have you jake with us so if you want to find out about more about jake and his company and his services uh do um click on the link below we'll, we'll insert the link when we uh post a replay version of this next week as well so you can get in touch with jake ask him many questions and stuff like that i'll leave sure. it to you guys so thank you jake thanks for coming with us and thank uh, you thank you
Thank you. Yeah, stay safe during this period. And uh, for everyone out there also, um, do keep a lookout for um, the episode launch of, of this uh, interview with Jake. And uh, we hope that everybody stay safe. Have a great week ahead. And uh, thank you for tuning in with Property Brothers so far. So good. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.